Hello and welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher live show. This is our second show and uh, I'm feeling really relaxed because this morning I took in a live class with Rosalind Kemmer. So thank you Rosalind for offering that to us. For anyone who wants to see that video, it's available in our private Facebook group, The Connected Yoga Teacher. Uh, any yoga teachers can go join that group. Um, I'm, first of all, I'm doing this video via Facebook Live on my desktop, so that's new. And I'm hoping, because I have a, an external microphone, I'm hoping the sound is a little bit better. And I wanted to try it out. So for those of you who have a computer, you can look for the option to do a Facebook Live video from your desktop. Um, and if you want to try it out, we have a little Facebook Live challenge going on in the Connected Yoga Teacher Facebook group. So it's just those yoga teachers can, that can see it in there. So I wanted to just let you guys know as a little bonus for today, one of my favorite prenatal yoga books, and there are a few of them. So this is just one. Um, it's called Yoga for Pregnancy and poses meditation and inspiration for expectant and new mothers and it's by leslie lakos and megan westgate so it's got lots of great uh artistic little mandalas all the way through so you can look for like that and amazing information so this is a book that i would highly recommend if you are looking at teaching prenatal yoga um, you can even get it from your library, check it out, and see if you like it. Uh, okay, so today is an exciting day here in my house. Um, my middle child, so I have three kids, turns 14 today. And we're going to have a little birthday celebration for him um, this evening for when he gets home from school. <laughs> so that's exciting. And what really brings it to mind for me today is that it was when I was pregnant with Colton that I started doing prenatal yoga. So I had a little yoga video that I did. I wasn't a yoga teacher at that time, 14 years ago, um, just practicing yoga and it made a big difference in my life. So um, yeah, it's fun that it's his birthday and I get to talk to you yoga teachers about the contraindicated things that you want to, the things that you want to avoid doing with pregnant people in yoga. So, um, just to dive into that a little bit, my own story, when I became a yoga teacher, uh, we took a short um, session on prenatal yoga within a 200 hour teacher training, which is pretty common. And in that, I started to think that I didn't really know what I was doing with pregnant women. So this is where my story begins with prenatal yoga and teaching prenatal yoga is that I, I was afraid of pregnant students coming into my classroom, <laughs> to put it bluntly. And what I ended up doing with them was mostly moving them into child's pose a lot because I thought, well, you move into child's pose, that's a safe pose <laughs> for you find some rest there. Um, hello and welcome Christine, thanks for joining. If you guys want to type in the comments where you're joining from and then also if you had some fear around or if you still have some fear around pregnant women uh, and just let me know if the sound is good and, and the video, video quality is good because again this is new from the desktop. Um, so today I really want to Kind of look at so oh yeah going back to my journey so i decided to then take a weekend prenatal yoga teacher training with janice claire field in montreal and that gave me a really good foundation and a good understanding of prenatal yoga and then when i came out i realized i was really curious and passionate and still wanted to continue to learn more so welcome sean i see that you're here if you can type where you're watching from and let me know how you're feeling about um, the possibility of pregnant people coming to your yoga class. That would be great. So 
the next stage in my journey of prenatal yoga is I began teaching prenatal yoga. And then I met Kim McDonald, who is the co-founder of Mama Nurture, our prenatal yoga school. And she was equally passionate about pregnancy, fertility, um, women's health in general, postnatal yoga. And so Mama Nurture became our baby <laughs> together. That's what we say, that we got married and had a baby. And it's fun to see Christine is here. Christine is a midwife, so if you guys have extra questions, you can type to her as well. She has taken the Mama Nurture course with us. And so that is where Mama Nurture started. Now, Mama Nurture is a full course. You can go on mamanurture.ca to find out more about that. And actually, that's where you'll find a handy little link, and I'll let you know more about that in a minute. Um, in Mama Nurture, we really see the whole journey. So fertility, prenatal yoga, um, comfort measures or birth prep classes, blessing ways, and then postnatal and baby and me. So it's a full, <laughs> full range of courses and that's why we decided we really wanted to split it up because it's a lot to take in all at once. Hi Becky from London, awesome to see you here. So, that's a little bit on Mama Nurture and the story leading up to. One thing to, to touch on before we dive into our little list. So we're going to go through today the contraindicated poses and breath practices in pregnancy. And then we'll get into the reasons why, some discussion around that, and then we're going to look at some examples of those poses. So something to keep in mind is that it's always great to work with. So if you're a pregnant woman watching this or you're a yoga teacher and you're not trained in prenatal yoga or you don't specialize in it, it's great to reach out and get that um, help and to work with the healthcare provider that your pregnant student is working with already. So if students have checked in with their doctor or midwife, I feel really comfortable then. Um, if they have the okay to practice yoga, especially if they're brand new to it, and a lot of pregnant people are brand new to yoga. So, hello, Sean. I like how you shared that you get nervous when pregnant women come to your yoga class um, and you have some idea, but it does take a lot of effort to adapt to class. So that's a really good point. Uh, so let's, I'm going to, I'm going to just go through this list one at a time, and if you want to take notes, I think that's a really good idea. I will be sending a link to everyone with the PDF that has just the real basic outline, so you can add to that list if you want to. So the very first one that we're going to start with today is breath retention, or a strong or forced breath. So if we think of holding the breath, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's good to go through this. So we don't get pregnant women to hold the breath in any way, no breath retention, because oxygen is delivered to the fetus when a woman is breathing. So we don't want to interrupt that. And some forced breath, if you think of breath of fire, is a really good example where it builds a lot of heat in the abdomen. Um, and this is a breath that we wouldn't get pregnant women to do at all. So any breath that's going to be really powerful and heating. Um, another one, and I can't remember the name of it, if you guys can, it's all gone from my mind. But if you come into Udiyanda Banda and then do stomach pumping. I can't remember it. It's gone. That one as well, we wouldn't do. Uh... Breath of fire is also sometimes called skull shining breath or kapalabhati. And then there's another one, veloma. So we do in Mama Nurture, we take a breath practice that would be um, a breath retention and we modify it. And that's veloma pranayama where you breathe in and then you breathe in and you're holding in that, but instead you skip the hold for pregnant women. And the reason for that one is that it's too much heat in the abdomen or it's lack of oxygen going to the fetus when we're holding the breath. So instead, one great thing to say in your class is, okay, if anyone here is pregnant 
or thinks they're pregnant or is uncomfortable with this breath of holding the breath or this powerful breath, continue with long, deep breathing. This is especially true in the first trimester. So if we think that the embryo is just attaching, right, to the placenta, it's just embedding there. And we want to stay away from anything that's really heating or fiery. Now, that said, sometimes people don't know that they're pregnant in a yoga class. So we ask them to really tune in with their intuition. And that's the same with all of these. We want students to be the ones saying, yes, I'm capable of doing this. I know my body well, and I want to do it. And then we also want to give them the information. So if I had a student um, come to me and say, this is a regular breath that I do and I want to continue, I would advise them um, with my knowledge, and then I would get them to check in with their health care provider. And then I would um, go from there. Uh, the second one is advanced poses. Now this can bring up a lot of discussion um, because first of all we have to figure out what, what do we mean by advanced poses. So if anyone has a guess, you're welcome to type it in the comments what you think to you what an advanced yoga pose is. And the reason why we don't do advanced yoga poses is because of the stress to mom and to baby. So <laughs> think of a an advanced yoga pose for you that is stressful to you or that you feel like it's a real challenge to you. So the modification of this would be to rest, find another pose that doesn't involve force or strain. In our mom and nurture course, we go a little bit deeper into finding some, some more modifications. Um, and then to really start to look at and this is how we come up with our modifications. Kim and I look at this. What are the benefits of this pose and how can we bring that? So whether you teach prenatal yoga or you teach a class and someone in that class can't do an advanced pose and they really want to be, what are the benefits? I love it, Christine. An asana that requires more ability, strength, or alters balance. Very good. <laughs> um, so some examples in this, so anything that's challenging or heat building. So for myself, crow pose is a real challenge for me. And this is not something that I would suggest bringing in as a new yoga pose in a prenatal yoga class. Uh, so the arm balances, and we'll go through that a little bit more. And yoga poses are styles that are new to the practitioner. So again, we'll go back to a lot of the time women are new to yoga when they come to prenatal yoga class, or they're new to yoga and they come to a regular class when they're pregnant. So it doesn't mean that we can't do any yoga with them. We want to be doing gentle yoga and we want to be doing a style of yoga that their healthcare provider is comfortable with as well. Careful on this one, because pregnant women are really care capable. They're really strong. Um, and they need to build up some strength for birth, but then for picking up a baby and carrying a, a car seat around and going through sleep deprivation and needing the nervous system calm down. So women need to, or benefit from, women benefit from being challenged in a yoga class to a degree. So it's a fine balance in that as well. The third one, and this one's really important, so this is the one that I would say, you know, to really look at your yoga poses for this one, is poses that strengthen or stretch the rectus abdominis muscles. And if you're not sure what those muscles are, I can try and put a, um, a note in the side as well, rectus abdominis. We have a great post on Mama Nurture that is about diastasis and this gives you a visual of where the rectus abdominis. But if you feel right now onto your belly and you feel for your six pack abs, <laughs> that's, that's your rectus abdominis. And then feel along the midline where the belly button is. I know this pretty well because I had diastasis after my babies and didn't know for nine years. 
and that's why I was having back pain. So around your belly button, if you can kind of push in, that's normal, that you can, you can feel the linea alba or that line between the two muscles. Then see if you can press into there a little bit more. So the moment we get, ask a student to strengthen these and to crunch these in, doing any um, crunches, it puts a, one, it puts a lot of pressure on the pelvic floor, but two, it's not healthy for the rectus abdominis. So it's not healthy for them to really tighten when, we, as we know in pregnancy, there's this expansion happening. And two, it's not healthy to over expand. So if you imagine that a mom is third trimester pregnant and then comes into a big full wheel pose, we're going to talk more because already you might be thinking, well, I'm a yoga teacher and I did full wheel <laughs> in pregnancy. Pretty sure I actually did that with my third. So there's no guilt here. This is to serve our students better or to serve if we're going through a pregnancy and we're a yoga teacher to really serve the body as best we can and to have that understanding and the education and then make our decisions. Just to go back a little bit, Christine also put a note, as the pregnancy progresses, a woman may not be able to do a certain pose. She may have been able to do earlier in the pregnancy. So that's really key. You might think, oh yeah, I can always lie on my back. We're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but now I can't, or any pose. So there's an element of that as well. So that's where the number two, the advanced pose, just to go back a little bit, can change. So an advanced pose, it might not have been advanced in first or second trimester, but it becomes advanced in third. Um, so the poses, number three, we'll, we'll jump ahead to that one again, poses that strengthen and stretch the rectus abdominis muscles. The reason for that is that the the muscles and the ligaments are already getting tight with the pregnancy, they're, so they're expanding. And then this work can actually cause them to tear or separate. So if we, if we tighten them too much, and then with the stretch of pregnancy, they, they can tear. So these two muscles can move away from each other, causing a space at the linea alba. That's that diastasis of the rectus abdominis muscles. Um, so, some notes on this is we want to start to look at how we can strengthen and use the transverse abdominis muscles instead, or the true core. And we'll go into this, we go into this in another future episode of our live show, and what is the true core. Um, but there's also an article on my website, and I'll try and remember to put the link in. Um, if you just type in Shannon Crow Yoga core, you'll likely come up with that, with that article. So some examples of this are leg lifts. So say if you're laying on your back and you're lifting your legs, it's likely engaging the core muscles. Now you can do a certain amount of this sometimes in pregnancy and I see pregnant women modifying. So it just won't feel good. So ask them, are you engaging these, these muscles at the front of the belly? And if so, we're gonna find a modification for that. Full boat pose is a really great example and especially even for recovering with diastasis of the rectus abdominis, full boat pose was off my list of poses to do. Um, Uddiyanda Bandha, so that requires holding the breath and really engaging those, so we're not gonna do that at all. Crane or crow pose, so there's that one. It's an advanced pose for me, and it's really engaging the core. And then Chaturanga. So for those of you who teach a flow class, you start to look at how can I change um, sun salutation for that. If you're interested in finding out more about those modifications, Kim and I have a course coming up and it's on Thursday, February the 23rd, 2017 at 10.30 a.m. This will be an online course via Zoom uh, it'll be our first one. We haven't done one like that, but we want to give people the chance to ask more questions so that we can see them on a live call. And so we're really excited about that. And I'll give you a little bit more information. Um, it will also be on the caution poses. So we're not going to go into that today, 
But if you're feeling like, okay, I feel like we've just touched on this and now I need more, this is the course to look into taking. And I'll put a link to that and get some more information to you guys as well. Okay, so number four is front extensions. So also called back bends. So for those of you just tuning in now, or wanting to see the list, this contraindicated yoga during pregnancy, it's a full uh, PDF, and I will get the PDF to you, the link, or you can go to mamanurture.ca, and it's as soon as you sign up for our email. So those of you who are on our email, you would have already gotten it. Um, and again, it's mamanurture.ca, M-A-M-A nurture.ca. And that, that goes through all of them and what we're listing here today. So it's a handy thing to print out. So the back bends or the front extensions or heart openers can overstretch the abdominal area. So same thing again. It just puts too much onto that. So if you think of um, bow pose, and there's a couple of reasons why bow pose doesn't work well in the pregnant body. Or cobra pose as well, same thing. But even, you know, full back bend. So if you're gonna, if back bend's already in your pr practice or in the student's practice and then they're pregnant, I would definitely go through this caution with them. Um, bridge pose is an okay one. So if we come into bridge, that's a great modification to use. Instead of full wheel, then bridge is a great one. And there's different ways to modify wheels so that you're getting the same benefits. Um, inversions. So you can imagine, inversions are already challenging. They usually produce a lot of heat. So we know that we've got two contraindications already in that. But say if you have a yoga teacher who is coming to your class or a yoga student who's been practicing for a long time and they've done inversions. Up to them, up to their healthcare provider, I don't lead inversions in a prenatal yoga class. But if everyone else is coming into an inversion, you can either modify it or you can let students know that it moves circulation away from the uterus. And some women can feel really dizzy. So the last thing you want to do is have a woman up in handstand and feeling dizzy. So if someone is really insistent on doing inversions, um, they're probably not going to my class because I just don't draw those people in usually. But it's nice to have a spotter for someone who's really insisting on inversions. And I showed a book at the beginning of our of this video, so if you want to see one of my favorite prenatal books, it's you'll see it at the beginning on the replay, and they talk about it in there a little bit, a little bit more in depth with inversions. Uh, so this isn't something I would, I would introduce in pregnancy for sure. So a really nice modification is wide-legged forward bend. So that's still an inversion. You're still getting the heart, the head lower than the heart but you're not putting them into a really um, difficult, say, arm balance on top of it. So you're still getting a lot of the same benefits. If, the, if you wanted the benefit of legs up over the head, <laughs> like in handstand or headstand, then maybe legs up the wall is a really great one as well. Uh, so some examples of that are headstand, handstand, shoulder stand. So the, those are the, one, the main inversions. Some of you uh, may consider downward dog an inversion, some practices do, and that is in our caution list. So Kim and I have a lot more talking to do on that one. Um, various opinions, and I think all, all great to take into consideration. So if you wanted to dive a little bit further, that would be on that uh, Zoom call that we're going to do. Okay, and then number six is prone poses on the belly. So you can see why it's really uncomfortable. Maybe first trimester a woman still feels like they want to be lying on their belly. Um, well, typically women feel like they want to be lying on their belly, but it doesn't feel comfortable. So it's not comfortable for them, it's not comfortable for the baby. So cobras, you're gonna have to start to modify.
And then if you do the flow, um, let's see. So it's uncomfortable. It's not advised in any practice. So an example of this, you might do, you might look for a pose that has the same benefits. So you might do cobra at the wall, or I've seen some yoga teachers get really creative. If any of you have a photo of you doing cobra with um, bolsters supporting upper body, lower body, we, we play around with this a little bit in the mama nature training. Uh, just a note on that one that it might be okay in first trimester, so they might decide to keep her in there. Some some other examples, so bow pose, we already talked about already it's too much on the abdomen. Cobra. Uh, and then upward facing dog, so you can imagine that's a lot of both. It's that front extension and they're possibly on their belly as well. Especially during third trimester. Number seven is standing twists. So some people will say, don't do twists during pregnancy, and I don't agree with that at all. Uh, but some standing twists, there's just not room for baby. <laughs> and you'll see it in your students if you're going to do a standing twist. It's too much pressure on the abdomen, and women aren't going to do it. So if you lead it, and they're looking at you like, I can't do it. You know, that's that's a great way to learn. Um, another great way to learn is to put a pillow in your shirt as you're practicing and see, okay, can they do this? So one really great one for this would be uh, standing revolved triangle. Not even a pose I would do with pregnant women at all. But then what are the modifications? You can do open twists, so you can look at different ways that you can twist. Um, and then number eight is hot yoga. There are different opinions for sure on this one, um, but I like to look towards science and um, my comfort level for sure as a teacher, and I would never recommend that someone goes to a hot yoga class. I did have someone come to a hot yoga class once and they were pregnant and I asked them to leave. So. The reason why is because, and we've done, science has done more tests in this with animals than people, but overheating in animals has caused miscarriage and birth defects. So you want to find a class that isn't heated in pregnancy. That's the basic rule. I know that some people do hot yoga and then say that they can do hot yoga. They can continue with it, and that's their own choice. And if they have a healthcare provider that okays it, and everyone is on board. Um, it's just that I wouldn't lead it. And one great way to check for this is um, if, if during any exercise, a woman can do her exercise and then take her temperature under her arm with a little thermometer. And if that temperature is, it, it needs to be less than 39.2 degrees Celsius when she's practicing. So that is, that information is from babycenter.ca, and I can put the link to that article a little bit more, basically over avoiding overheating. So, as I said, in when you guys go back and watch the replay, you'll see one of my favorite books at the beginning. Um, also, I'd love to see in the in the comments if you're interested in taking. It'll be a 90 minute training or an hour and a half training on contraindicated poses, caution poses. So we'll be going through these, but a few more modifications. So we have a longer bit of time to do that. And you'll get a booklet like this. This is a little Mama Nurture prenatal yoga school booklet. This is also a booklet that we give out when we go to yoga teacher trainings and do an hour to two hours of prenatal yoga introduction. So in that, you'll get the full list with even more information on it than, than the, the PDF. Everyone will get the PDF today, though, that one. And then also we start to dive into the caution poses. So some of the caution poses, just so you know, and, and these, we don't, we don't have enough time to cover these today. <laughs> My time's almost up. 
but lying on the back is one of those caution poses. There's many reasons for that. Squatting, twists and forward bends, cow face pose, um, wide legged poses, and downward dog. Now, there are ways to really modify and look after a pregnant student in these. They're not contraindicated. There's no one saying don't do those ones. They're cautions. There's certain ways to look after a pregnant woman in those. And we'll be going through those in the, in the online training. Thank you, Christine. Also, women need to keep comfortable. Overheating is not ideal. That's a really good, good uh, point for prenatal students. Um, also, if you go to mumanurture.ca, you can get our basic prenatal yoga sequence. So if you're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I have a pregnant person coming to my class. Or if you just want to be ready for a pregnant person showing up, this basic prenatal yoga sequence, I don't know if you can see it, aha, uh -huh. um, you can print it out and have it ready to go. And you can do it with a gentle class. No one would ever know that <laughs> it's not just for prenatal yoga. There are a few other flows on our website as well. And I think that's it. So mark your calendar for Thursday, February 23rd, 2017, 10.30 a.m. We're only going to take 15 participants for this training, and it's $45. That gives you an hour and a half to um, talk to Kim and I will be doing the presentation and then so it's about an hour of presenting going through the modified poses different points and then we're allowing for about a um, half an hour to really dive into some sequencing and then we'll have a little bit of time for questions as well uh, I think that's it everyone thank you so much for joining me today and if you didn't check out the yoga practice and you need some yoga for yourself there's one in our private Facebook group feel free to share this with um, your friends who are any friends that are pregnant or working with pregnant women Christine has also added lots of great comments thank you Christine she's living in her yurt <laughs> I love seeing your post Christine um, and she's saying that also the ligaments can stretch a little bit too much uh, in the hot yoga classes. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, everyone who showed up for the live video, but also thank you if you're here for the replay. Namaste. Have a great week.